Next, I will show how to apply the one-way analysis of variance procedure to test a statistical claim about more than two population means. Consider the following example. A dean wants to check the consistency of teaching quality among the faculty in one of the departments. A sample of students was obtained from three classes taught by three different faculty, and their common final exam scores were recorded. Use 10% significance level to test the claim that the teaching quality is consistent among the three courses. Let's compute the summaries for each sample and the summary of all samples combined. Now let's identify the statistical claim that needs to be tested. The claim is that the teaching quality is consistent among the three courses. One way to measure the quality is by the average grade on the common exam. So we are testing the claim that all means are the same. Symbolically, such claim can be written as mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3. The way we are going to measure the likeliness of three samples is by computing the test statistic. But let's gather some intuition about what are we trying to achieve here. This is the distribution of all test results as if they were in one sample. We can call it the average distribution. These are the graphs of three sample distributions that we obtained. Do they look the same or in other words, do they look like the average distribution? The answer is not obvious. It would be an obvious no if they look like this. And in such case, we would expect the test statistic to be very high. But if all distributions were overlapping the average distribution, then the answer will be the obvious yes, and the test statistic will be equal to zero. Before we begin the ANOVA procedure, let's check if all necessary assumptions are satisfied. The samples must be assumed simple random and independent. If not, then the results of the test are invalid. Populations must be assumed normal and they must have equal population standard deviations. We will use the following template to perform the hypothesis testing. In step one, we will set up the hypothesis. In step two, we will identify the significance level. In step three, we will find the test statistic using the formula. In step four, we will perform either the critical value approach or p-value approach to test the claim. In step five, we will draw the conclusion and finally, in step 6, we will interpret the results. The null and alternative hypothesis are always the same in any ANOVA test. The null hypothesis is that the population means are the same. And the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of the means is not the same as the others. An ANOVA test is always right tail. Step 1 is complete. The significance level can always be found in the statement of the problem. In our case, it is 10%. Step 2 is complete. The test statistic can be computed by finding the ratio of the variation between the samples and the variation within the samples. To compute the test statistic, we are going to use the template. First, enter the sample sizes in yellow. Then enter the sample means in green. And the mean of three samples combined in the provided cell. Then enter the sample variances in blue. The variation between the samples will be computed using the following formula. To find the total one, we will multiply the sample size by the square of the difference between the sample mean and the mean of all samples and add them together. To find the denominator, we subtract 1 from the number of samples k to get 2. So the variation between the samples is equal to 84.08 divided by 2, which is 42.04. The variation within the samples will be computed using the following formula. To find the total 2, we will multiply the variances by the sample size minus 1 and add them together. To find the denominator, we subtract k, the number of samples, from n, the number of observations altogether, to get 18. 
so the variation between the samples is equal to 867.75 divided by 18, which is 48.21. The table summarizes all the computations necessary to compute the test statistic F0, which follows the F distribution with 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 18 degrees of freedom in the denominator. The test statistic F0 is the ratio of the variance between the samples and the variance within the samples, which is equal to 0 0.872. Step 3 is complete. Next, we will test the hypothesis using two different approaches, the critical value and the p-value. In the critical value approach, we construct the rejection region. In this approach, we need to know the significance level alpha and the type of the test. We draw the rejection region under the F probability density curve with 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 18 degrees of freedom in the denominator, according to the type of the test. So right tail test will have the rejection region in the right tail. The region must have the area equal to the significance level 10%. The left boundary of the region is the critical value F0.10 which is 2.624. So the entire region can be described as all the values to the right of 2.624. In p-value approach, we compute the p-value. In this approach, we need to know the test statistic and the type of the test. We find the p-value using the F probability density curve with two degrees of freedom in the numerator and 18 degrees of freedom in the denominator, according to the type of the test. So in the right tail test, the p-value is the area to the right of the test statistic. Symbolically, it can be expressed as the probability of f being greater than 0 0.872, which is 0 0.435. Next, we are going to decide whether to reject or not reject the null hypothesis. In the critical value approach, we must check whether the test statistic is in the rejection region or not. Our test statistic is 0 0.872, and it is to the left of the critical value 2.624, thus it is not in the rejection region. In the p-value approach, we must check whether the p-value is less than the significance level or not. Our p-value is 0 0.435, and it is greater than alpha. Both tests suggest that we do not reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Next, we are going to interpret the results. Interpretation. Under 10% significance level, we do not have sufficient evidence to suggest that the quality of teaching is inconsistent among the faculty in the department. The hypothesis test is complete. I just showed how to apply the ANOVA procedure to test a statistical claim whether the population means are the same or not. This procedure is similar in spirit to the two means T pooled procedure, except that it can be done for three and more populations.